Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to talk about these two very common ideas amongst players trying to gain MMR but perhaps struggling to do so and that is that your team is holding you back or the system's rigged. Every time you win a couple games, boom, the smurfs, the game ruiners, they all come out, they drag you back down. But no, I don't think these are the reasons you can't climb MMR. I will say these things do happen, you know, so feel a bit of validation here. You can lose games because your team is terrible, and you can get unlucky with matchmaking. And although that may ruin a particular win streak you have, it will not stop you from gaining MMR in the long run. So I'm going to try to talk you out of these mentalities because I think they'll actually hold you back if you believe them. So the reason I don't believe in them is that one, normal players like you and I gain and lose MMR all the time. If those previous ideas were true, we would all just be stuck at whatever rank we are currently at. No way to go up or down because it's a rigged system. But that's not the case. People do go up and they do go down and so it is possible. Smurfs and boosters, although I don't approve of them, if the system were to be rigged currently, and if there are nine game ruiners in every single game you play, Smurfs and boosters show that it doesn't really matter. You can still go up in MMR very quickly by simply being better than all of that. Now, I know it's not that easy to simply play 5,000 MMR higher than you currently are, but you don't need to because the system's not actually rigged and not every single game has nine game ruiners. But I just kind of throw it in here to show that it is possible and you can have individual impact that is big enough to win the majority of your games. Some games are uncontrollable. And by that, I mean that you will lose games because someone's a big crybaby and they break their items. That happens. It also works the other way, though, where you have the Smurf on your team and he goes 20-0 on Huskar. Wow, wasn't that convenient? And yet you don't hear very many complaints about that, do you? We tend to be a little biased as people and only notice the negative things. Here's the thing, though. Although some games are uncontrollable, it actually will not stop you from gaining MMR. You can still go up or down based on your own individual performance. Hello, before we get into that, you can try to reduce the amount of uncontrollable games you have. First, ask yourself this question, be vulnerable here a bit, be honest. Are you a little bit of an asshole? Because if your behavior score is below 10,000, you will get more toxic games. At 10,000, you will still get toxic games, but you'll get a little less of them. So it is in your direct benefit, even if you are a toxic person, to be on your best behavior, stay at 10,000. Also, the time of day or week you play can affect this. I know not everyone has the freedom, sometimes you're busy, but if you do and you're looking for normal teammates, but you queue at 3 a.m., normal people don't play at 3 a.m. So you're gonna get you're gonna get the weird games. Now, how many games are really lost by teammates, anyways? A hundred percent? I hear that a lot, right? Every single game is griefed or ruined. But really, like every single game, come on, that's a bit of an exaggeration, right? Surely, every now and then you get a game with 10 people who just genuinely like the game and like to play with honor. But for the sake of this example, let's say 90% of games are ruined. That is still quite a lot of them, and it doesn't matter. You'll have 45% auto losses and auto wins. It's going to be even because if you're stagnating in MMR, you're getting a roughly 50% win rate. So let's just split all these uncontrollable games where sometimes it's a smurf on your team. Sometimes it's a smurf on their team. Sometimes they're ruining. Sometimes we're ruining. Everyone's equal. But you're a good player. You deserve to climb MMR. So in those 10% of games you do get to control, you will win them all, of course. And so you'll have a 55% win rate, and that is really respectable, actually. That's 300 MMR in about 100 games, and that's a very solid climbing pace. Now, what if it's actually 95% of games? Okay, let's actually bump it up. You'll still get your even wins and losses. 5% you control, and I guess we can admit that sometimes we make mistakes. I guess, whatever. It's usually my teammates, I swear but sometimes I don't win all the games I'm supposed to. But as long as you win the majority of those games, you will still end up at a positive win rate. 50.5% still climbs, but very slowly. So this is about 30 MMR over 100 games. Slow, but you'll eventually get there. Now, it turns out you actually are a great player. You win all 5%. Boom, 52.5% win rate. That's 150 MMR 
over 100 games. And that is enough to go from one metal little star thing. I don't know. Get the next star. It's about 150 MMR. And so even with all of these games being ruined, you can still go up in MMR. I don't think that many games are ruined, though. In my own experience, I feel like 10% of my games feel completely out of control. And I have like, I'm not going to win the remaining 90%, obviously, but I feel like they're close. I feel like they are won or lost based on things that I could have done better or not. Or maybe I do uh, perform well, but still lose. But it's like, ah, it's whatever. It was a close game. It's fine. So I really don't think that many games are ruined. I know everyone has a different experience. So even if you want to bump this number up, it doesn't really matter. At 95% game ruined, you can still climb MMR. Next, let's talk about forced 50%. Now, first of all, you can get unlucky or lucky with matchmaking where the Smurfs are on your team, the enemy team is ruining or it happens to you, right? And it will suck. It does happen. It will ruin a particular win streak you might be on, but it won't be the reason you can't climb. Because here's the thing. If you truly are a better player and you should go up in MMR, then you will get a, you'll climb. You'll start to go up and then boom, the Smurf, the Toxic, ah, oh, unlucky, unlucky you'll do it again because you are better than your teammates and because you're better than the opponents, you'll climb MMR and then boom, ah, unlucky. Okay, Smurfs, boosters, game ruiners again. Eventually, you will do it. You will climb and you won't get hit by that unlucky streak because it just, that's luck. Eventually, it doesn't happen. Statistics, something like that. I don't know. And you'll go up. If you don't go up, if this keeps happening, it may not be based on luck. It might be because you actually are not a better player. I know that sounds a little offensive, but when you gain MMR, the games get harder. Individually, from game to game, you may not experience this because 30 MMR is not a ton, and because of weird matchmaking, let's say even if it's a 2,000 MMR average game, like your 2,000 MMR, sometimes you'll be the high end where most of your teammates are lower than you. And sometimes you'll be the low end where most of your teammates are higher than you. So from game to game, you may not experience this. But over time, as you win more games, they do get harder because that's what MMR is. The players are supposed to be better and you have to perform better. So... You might win a couple games based on luck or good performances, but then not actually be good enough to keep up with them, and so you fall back down. Is that that weird? I would say no. Like, is it strange that the game would even give you harder games to test if you deserve higher MMR? I would just say that's like part of the process. So if it's not based on luck, it might be this, where you actually are just not good enough. When you get put in the harder games, you can't compete, so you fall back down. The last thing I want to talk about is biased perception. Now, I, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a statistician. So feel free to roast me on this. I don't actually know that much about these topics. But there are a couple things I would like to highlight that you might have experienced in your Dota career. The first is salience bias, which is very fancy. But really, it just means that some things feel more prominent because they affect us more emotionally. And then we go ahead and ignore things that don't matter to us. So for example, let's pick a number from 1 to 10,000, and I tell you 9,462, and you go, okay, that's a number 1 in 10,000. And I say, yeah, that is a number 1 in 10,000. And then I tell you 6,969, and then you go, that is hilarious. What are the odds he would pick that number? The same odds as the last number. They're both 1 in 10,000, but 1 has a meaning to you. Let's get back to this. Another thing is randomness bias, which is pretty self-explanatory, and it's just the tendency to see a pattern in what is just random data, but you like, I see the meaning in the numbers. There's no meaning, it's just random things. The last is selective perception, which is that if you wanna see things a certain way, you will. And so when we combine these three things, that can impact us in Dota and in other parts of real life, but anyways, Dota, Take a look at this. You got five wins, five losses. This is where a lot of people would say forced 50% team ruiners, right? I was gaining MMR and then I just got the worst people ever on my team. That is really not that different though from winning a game and then losing some and then winning some and then losing some because ultimately it's a 50% win rate. But this one is far more noticeable because it all happens in a row and that is what evokes this feeling of like a rigged system. Suddenly everything's against me, but it it really isn't, um, in my opinion. It may happen 
you know, where you do get the bad teammates, but eventually you'll get past it. Like we said, you play enough games. If you truly do deserve to go up, you will get past being unlucky. Oh, another thing I want to say about this is that I know this is actually different a little bit. In terms of Dota, uh, wins and losses are not totally random. It can depend on your own skill. And so I would say if you frequently experience large win streaks and then large lose streaks, I would say you're a very inconsistent player, but with a wide range of potential. And so sometimes you play very well and sometimes you play very poorly. And that's why you fluctuate like this. Whereas if you are more consistent like this, you win a couple, you lose a couple, then you are a consistent player, but you maybe don't have the greatest range of potential. And so those are different situations. They call for different things, but also just a series of 10 games also don't mean anything. So you don't have to read into it that far. Here's another way to think about it. Sometimes people say, I'm a 2000 MMR player. It, this is a bit rigid. You're not really a 2000 MMR player. You're more of a range. And it probably looks something like this, where most of your performances are somewhere around 2000. But sometimes you play down here, and sometimes you play up here. Way to go. But overall, you're somewhere around 2000. And so that can work for you in a good way, where you get unlucky, you play poorly for a little bit, you fall down to like 1800 MMR. But because you are truly a 2000 MMR player, as long as you don't get tilted out by this lost streak, and as long as you maybe fix whatever you were doing to underperform, you get your rest, whatever, I don't know, you will return to 2000 MMR because that's where you typically perform and you will recover that MMR you lost. That feels fine. That feels good, right? Oh, we lost MMR, but we got it back. Nice, we're good, we're good. Unfortunately, the harsh reality is that it works the other way too, where you might climb MMR to like, I don't know, what is this, 2,250? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm improving, I'm getting there. But you may not be, guys, I'm sorry. You might still be like a 2,000 average player just currently performing pretty well. And then because most of your performances are still at a 2,000 level, that means as you play these 2,300 ranked games, you, you can't compete and so you fall down and so your MMR goes back to 2,000. And that feels bad because it feels like, oh, we were climbing and now we lost. And because the losses are more recent, we're more upset. But it's, it's really the same thing both ways because at the end of the day, we were typically a 2,000 MMR player, but with just some range to it. For me, I don't feel like I've become a better player when I gain MMR here because like I said, I think I'm still within the typical fluctuations. It's not until I break past this threshold of 300 MMR which is 10 games, that's when I feel like, wow, maybe, maybe we're getting there. Maybe I'm becoming a better player. And so maybe my new range is something like this, where at my best, I play like a 2,400 player and my worst is now about 1,800. And unfortunately, what this means is that my average is actually down here a little bit. And so what's likely to happen is that you will fall back down a little bit and that might feel bad. You're like, oh, I reached this new peak and then I fell, rigged system, but actually it's very normal, guys. Most of us do not hit a new peak in MMR and then stay there forever. Most of us reach that peak and then drop back down. You're still a better player, guys. Still pat yourselves on the back. You still gained 100 MMR and you are a better player at your best and you're not as bad of a player at your worst. It's just, you're not always gonna sit at this peak. So if you do get to this peak and you fall back down, don't don't sweat it too much. This is still a positive thing. There's many ways MMR gain can happen. So I'm not gonna like go into all of them, but for example, another way is you just cut out your worst performances. You stop throwing in the same situations. You realize like, ah, I always do this. So you stop doing that. And now you've improved your worst games. Even though your best performances are still around 2,300, your average will still be improving, and so you'll be somewhere around here, 2,100. You've become a more consistent player with less poor range, but you haven't really pushed up yet. Many different ways this kind of thing can happen, but just to pitch that idea to you that you won't always experience what we just talked about. So with all that said and done, let's change our mindset to something else now. You can do something to win every game. False, I actually don't like this mentality either, although it is just a bit of semantics. I think focusing on the win is unhealthy and that is toxic in its own way. I do think you should try to win every game and that you should approach every game as winnable, but don't fixate on the actual victory because you cannot win every game like we talked about. Some games completely out of your control. 
And if you're always thinking, I have to win, that's going to feel bad. As you get hit with these losses that are out of your control, or maybe they were in your control, but you messed up, that's okay. That's human. We lose games sometimes, so don't get stuck on that. Let's change this to something else. You can impact and improve every game, and this is true. No matter how bad your teammates are, you can look at a game and say, I had poor map awareness here, and I didn't see this really obvious gank coming in. That may not win you that particular game, but that is the kind of habitual performance improvement that you need to eventually climb MMR in future games where you don't have someone on your team breaking items because they got their lane stolen or something like that. So let's think about impacting and improving every game, just trying to play well ourselves and always look to see what can we do better. That is something every single game can happen, and that is a healthy way to approach gaining MMR. I like to visualize this idea as you see on the screen here, which is that to win a game of Dota, you need 100%. I don't know what, contribution, effort, heart, soul, it doesn't matter. Five players means that everyone needs to contribute 20%, and then you get to win the game of Dota. But in reality, that's not usually what happens. Some people overperform, some people underperform, and it can still be a win even as you have some bad teammates, so long as you help cover for them and get to that 100%. When that doesn't happen, that's when you lose, you don't get to the 100%, ah, too bad. The thing is, most, not most, but there are people like player one who will lose this game, they look at player three, four, and five, and they say, those guys are why we lost the game. They're terrible players. And you know what? It is the reason you lost this game. Are they terrible players? I don't know. They may have just been having a bad game, guys. You don't need to be that harsh. But blaming them doesn't really help you. And frankly, I don't think player one gets to blame them because player one just did their job, 20%. They didn't do any more. They didn't do any less. They made the mistakes they're allowed to make. No more, no less. Do you know who does that? People at the correct MMR as in they shouldn't climb. Because if you are just an average player, only doing your job, never doing more, never doing less, that means you're where you're supposed to be. That's why you can't climb MMR, because you only do what you're supposed to do. Player two here, he gets to complain. I'm not a big fan of complaining, but player two, he gets to complain, because this guy did 30%. He won his lane, he helped win another lane, he called out ganks, he made smoke plays, he did a ton. And unfortunately, these guys didn't have such a hot game, so he lost. Don't be someone like player two and then say, look how well I did. Why did I still lose this game? That doesn't matter, guys. Why you won any particular game or not is not important. The real question is, does player two perform like this every single game he plays, or at least the majority of the games he plays? Because if he does, then he will go up in MMR. When you consistently overperform compared to your peers, that is when you gain MMR. So for this game, I don't care how he did. I want to see the next game he plays and see if he performs like this again. And if he does, then I say, keep at it. Who cares about this game? Let's learn from it. Let's figure out why they didn't do so hot so that you can keep being a better player, but don't care about this particular game and whether you won or lost. So in, again, don't blame these guys. Focus on what was missing. And let's ask ourselves, if we're player one here, how do I add that? Could I have ganked somewhere else? Could I have smoked somewhere? Could I have done another stack, called a play? If I had better map awareness, could I have helped them? Because that's the thing, Dota is very interconnected. You don't have to do the full 8%. You have to help your teammates improve a little bit. You do an extra gank. You help player three out. He has a better game, and he does a gank that now works out with player four and five. They have a better game. Boom, we're at 100% now. So don't focus on who's underperforming. Ask yourself what in the game was lacking and how could I try to contribute to that such that the next game I play and I see something like this happen, instead of just doing my job, bare minimum, I try to do a little more and I try to win that game and that's how you gain MMR. A couple points to recap what we've talked about. Bad luck does happen. So stay calm, stay strong, don't tilt out because bad luck doesn't make you a bad player unless you get upset over it and you start performing worse. And then at that point, you kind of are playing poorly and you kind of deserve the MMR loss from there. So stay calm, keep trying to be a good player and you'll recover that MMR over enough time. If good luck happens, 
still stay calm, stay humble. You got to keep trying your best if you want to keep that MMR. And even if you do try your best, you might still lose it. Don't be too upset about it. Take a deep breath. Realize that's part of the process. Some ups, some downs. I got to keep looking to myself, keep improving slowly, and I will get there. Blaming teammates, unproductive. In the short term, it may make you feel a little better, but that's actually a little bit toxic, guys, so I don't really recommend that. They're just people trying their best as well. No need to really get angry at them. Sometimes they get a little angry, they get a little grumpy. Just mute them, go ahead and ignore them, and bring it back to yourself. My own good, consistent performance. Because if I keep playing well every game, over enough games, I will get past the bad luck, the good luck, the rigged system, and I will get to the MMR I deserve to be as long as I am playing well. And that's why we need to put improving first and then the MMR. This is why buying an account doesn't make you a better player because you superficially get to the MMR, right? But you're not really a better player, and so that's why over enough games you drop back down. It works in every direction. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that's why be a better player and you'll get your MMR. Now, if you've been trying to do this and you're thinking like, Zach, I watch your stupid videos and I am improving and yet my MMR is going nowhere, what's happening? Everyone's watching my stupid videos. Not everyone, but maybe one day. Everyone is trying to improve usually, and they are. They're slowly getting there as well. And so if you are just matching the pace of everyone improving, that's why you will be improving, but your MMR is the same because relatively, you're still matching the same people. You need to improve faster than these guys who are also improving to actually gain MMR. If you're still not convinced after watching this video, or perhaps you've got a friend whose mind you can't change, I've got a new series called Whose Fault Is It Anyways You Might Be Interested In, where we pick apart a game and see, is this a game the team lost, or could this player have done more to win the game? If you want to be on that, you know, send a match ID, that's somewhere else. I'll, I'll describe that in the description, check that out. Or this video focused mostly on not blaming your team, looking to yourself. Maybe you want some other MMR tips, like how do I make my team play better? Or how do I make the grind a little faster? Those are other videos. I'll link them wherever. But that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and good luck out there.